Rose. Welcome to the podcast. This is Family Home Evening with Bad Mormon. Tonight, you got Mandy, Charlotte, and Courtney. Yay! Yay! <laughs> For those who have just stumbled upon this podcast by accident, I'll start by, I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, start by apologizing. Uh, this might not be what you think it is, or maybe it's not exactly what you think it is because it could be dudes in leather and i apologize that we're not that either <laughs> um <laughs> you're thinking of badmormons.com correct we are f-h-e bad mormons big difference com. huge difference it just riding on their coattails <laughs> <laughs> we are a bunch of sisters and brothers that uh were raised mormon but it just didn't stick <laughs> and we did a lot of bad things. And although Courtney's technically not a sister, she pretty much is by default at this She's point. She's my sister wife. Because it's been what, like 25 years, 30 years that we've been okay, BFFs? So, yes. And I also think that I should be included because um, the Mormons continued to knock on my door and try <laughs> to feel my soul long after you moved out. They kept on trying to find you and then kept on asking. Like, a couple I heard you're her partner. <laughs> <laughs> And Satan does not want you to do that. The the clam digging, the <laughs> the red tide, the vagina loving is not what Jesus is about. Do you think those are the images those poor boys had in their head when they would come and knock on our door? Like, I hope I'm not interrupting their perfect mention. <laughs> Probably not, but God, I hope so. Now I hope it was, yes. <laughs> I'm going to take off my, my glasses because it's nighttime. It's nighttime. And though I like to wear my sunglasses at night, so I can, so I can, so I can. Um, <laughs> now I can't remember the rest of the lyrics of that song. <laughs> See the hope that's inside of me? So, Maybe. <laughs> hey, listen, let's not get too off track. I'm pretty drunk. Let's, I am extremely drunk. We went to brunch today and we drank a lot of champagne. I'm drinking a little lemon drop martini right now. I'm sticking on the tramp. Trampane, 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 trail. <laughs> I like it. Trampane. It's like you're I'm a tramp. Tra- I'm a trampane. You're a slutty champagne tramp. <laughs> On the trampoline. I got nothing. What do you got, Courtney? Um, I'm drinking myself a nice uh, 2017 Charles and Charles Chardonnay. Trying Ooh. to keep it classy up in here. Oh, la la. They had cases of it on sale at Costco for forty dollars, <laughs> <laughs> and it gets my fucking drunk. It gets yeah. my booze hole wet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if we've properly given the credit your booze hole deserves for this whole podcast even existing. My booze hole gets dry. We get it real wet. We come up with ideas. <laughs> <laughs> it's solid gold. <laughs> hey, uh, listen. I want to give a quick shout out to our patrons. Thank you, patrons, for all the money you give us. It really makes us feel wanted and included. Also, if you're a patron right now, you're probably seeing what everybody else is only hearing. Hello! (laughs) You'll never know what that was unless you pay us money. (laughs) Yeah, so that that brings me back to uh, uh, Joe had a road rage incident the other day he was telling me about when he was uh, going to drop off the car downtown so we could, uh, you know, walk to the bar have a drink and then drive home but anyway he got into a little road rager with uh, some guy who like passed him on the right sped by so joe had his middle finger up like just flipping him <laughs> off and then they wound up at the uh they wound up at the stoplight together and the guy's just like you know yelling and flipping off joe and everything and joe's yeah. just shaking his head smiling and flipping off the guy and i was like you know what you ought to do instead of you know just like road raging with him and flipping him off you ought to <laughs> <Yes>! <laughs> You gotta be a patron to know what you gotta do um but, but anyway i really really hope that next time joe's in a road rage uh he, he so if you guys want to know how to diffuse a road rage situation and potentially save a life three dollars a month is all we just ask become for. a patron and you'll know exactly what the fuck we're talking about <laughs> but i do it does make me want to tell a story about our brother kelly oh, um oh Courtney, you know our brother Kelly. No, yeah. not today's story. He was oh. aw- he was awful to me, but I'm not going to actually tell that story because it's not that funny. He's just a dick. But um, he was- not all siblings can be on the podcast. No, okay? there's he's too many. Not invited. <laughs> um, but um, when he was, uh, I don't know, he had this job where he was doing appraisals on houses, and somebody accidentally rear-ended him. Like not bad. Like it literally was just a tap at the light. Not a big deal. And he knew it wasn't a big deal. And so he looked in the rear and he 
Riva Mira and he's like, oh, he could see that they were like, oh my God, did I just hit him? Like, oh fuck. And all I did was he made eye contact with him through the Riva Mira, did a kissy phase in his hand and then blew it towards them. And I was like, what a wonderful way to diffuse a situation. <laughs> like, <laughs> and like, no one got out of their cars. No one decided to talk to each other. It's like, oh, you know, <laughs> and it was perfect. <laughs> and so that makes me laugh a yeah, lot. That's pretty cool. Which is actually what I used today to turn around and piss him off even further when he yelled at me and called me a cunt. I just <laughs> gave kissy faces to him and said, oh, Kelly. <laughs> Did you do like a FaceTime call with him or something like that? Oh, no, it was through a Facebook messenger, but they have emojis with like the face with the, like the heart comes out of the kissy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's it enough. Facebook fight. It's enough to piss him right the fuck off. <laughs> well, I saw, I saw one comment, he, one comment he left you and I was like, oh God. <laughs> yeah. I delete. So this is what started that argument. Sorry, I guess. Sorry, patrons. Let's and just start listeners. with saying face. It was a Facebook fight. It was a Facebook fight. And me and Kelly. Yeah. yeah facebook fight but not with each other he was yelling at my friends and i don't know like i just it's was not using, important enough he was, he was using, using words, words that were very not appropriate and i personally don't like them myself so like also your clients are and i have like facebook. like yeah i've got clients on my facebook page the last thing i need them to do is think that i'm a fucking monster like my brother so you know i deleted the whole thing and he got mad <laughs> Oh, meow. Hey, I'm going <laughs> to switch gears here real quick. Fair. Uh, we have a listener. We've got a best friend. We've got a new best friend. Her name is Super Fresh Candy Pants. Mm-hmm. And well, we, you've heard that name before because one, best fucking name yeah. ever. Every time you, you think it, you want to say it out loud because it's like Super Fresh Candy Pants. Let's just all say it together. Super, super Fresh, fresh candy, candy, candy Pants. pants. <laughs> so good. <laughs> It's so good. And she also gives us the best ideas Mm -hmm. as we had come up with the idea that maybe every episode we should come up with a Mormon recipe because they're gross or delicious. (laughs) Depends. Basically, we were running out of weird Mormon shit to talk about because like how many times can you talk about white Jesus? How many times can you talk about little praying children statues? statues. They're called willow statues. Statues of temples. Cross stitch. (laughs) Right. Says Jesus or whatever. So she gave us a present. We got a little (laughs) something in the mail. Ooh. From Super Fresh Candy Pants. It's I think it's our first like fan mail package. Someone sent us wine once. Oh, that's that's nice. oh yeah, that's true. Okay, our second that's package. Our second package. Um, and I just wanna I, I did slit it open because I didn't want to have to wrestle with the packaging. But this it's is, a Mormon cookbook. This is called <laughs> the Mormon Trail cookbook. And listeners, if you're only hearing the audio of this, we're looking at a a train of covered wagons, a lot of, a lot of fuck ton of people, a lot of sister wives. There's a lot. They look like they're related to each other. There's a lot of similarities and they all look hungry and they're pulling food out of hats. Yeah. (laughs) Food out of hats. There's a lot of sagebrush around. They could be in death Valley. Maybe there's some potted meat in those hats. We don't know. It's a Mormon trail cookbook, (laughs) if you will, from the pioneer days. So we thought we would open this bad boy up and read you a recipe. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to read you two a recipe. Then you're going to tell me what you would pair it with. Okay. Probably an alcoholic drink. Yeah. And before I, for, before I forget, um, you want to know what's kind of cool about candy pants? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can eat them. Also, I could be wrong and I'm drunk, so I apologize if we've already said it, but it was super fresh. Pa- Candy Pants' idea to pair a Mormon recipe with oh, an yeah. alcoholic beverage. I, we might have said that. I don't know. I'm a little drunk. Pretty soon she's going to take over the podcast. She should. And, and you know, be our showrunner. <laughs> we need a third. We definitely need a showrunner. You know? Wait, hold on. What is that called in, in sexy time? Except for it's gross because we're sisters. We need a third. <laughs> <laughs> like a third sex partner? Kind, kind, that's where my brain went not that it makes sense never mind keep that's going gross read yes. this. Please, please, please don't please don't rape your listeners <laughs> <laughs> all right you guys for our first in a series of what i hope is many reads from this delightful cookbook called the mormon trail cookbook i'm gonna read you from page 88 how to do fireside boiled green corn Well, that sounds innocent enough. Okay, let's start. Uh, Corn for boiling should be full grown, but young and tender. (laughs) That's interesting. (laughs) 
How young and tender, I wonder. 14 is the maximum age of corn, okay? It's got to be 14 or younger. Uh, sweet corn is the most desirable, of course. When the grains become hard, it's... When the grains become hard, it's too old for boiling. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay so wait what's that guy's name the stay sweet guy stay sweet. warren jeffs warren <laughs> jeffs yes oh wait hold on hold is on is this warren jeffs corn wait it's about to be because listen to the next sentence test by piercing the grain the milk should escape in a jet what the, fuck? <laughs> the milk we're talking about corn right right <laughs> The milk should escape in a jet. That sounds sexual. You can milk a corn? That sounds sexual to me. Oh my God. Clean by stripping off the outer layer of shucks. Turn back the inner shucks. Pick off the silk. That's garments. That's garments. Garment. That's garments. <laughs> Pick off the silk. Bring back the inner shucks over the grains. And tie the ends. Bondage. That's fucking bondage. <laughs> What the fuck am I reading? Polygamy Warren Jeff's sex time. It's a green <laughs> corn recipe. Hold on. My eyes are bad. Okay. Well, let me read this again. Sorry. Test by piercing the grain. The milk should escape in a jet. Clean by stripping off the outer layer of shucks. Turn back the inner shucks. Pick off the silk. Bring back the inner shucks over the grains and tie the ends. Okay, fine. Uh, this process preserves the sweetness of the corn. Stay sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Put the corn into a pot of boiling salt water, enough to cover it. Cover and boil long enough to cook. Okay. Uh, what we just said. That's not time on that. How uh, no timing or rapid boil, who knows? <laughs> Any exposure to heat after this injures the corn. When cooked, cut off the stalk close to the cob. <laughs> Lorena Cobbett, and remove the shucks. <laughs> Cold boiled corn may be cut away from the cob and fried or fried mixed with a mashed potato. Green corn may be cooked in the shuck in hot ashes for about one hour. Witchcraft. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mormon Trail Cookbook, recipe number one. Now, I've got so many questions. <laughs> Let's see if there's a glossary. Nope. Okay, go on. What do you pair with that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, you got to. I am going with Everclear, a grain alcohol muddled Smart. with limes and uh, club soda. I'm gonna, I like it. I want to say like Boone's Farm wine with GHB. <laughs> And Everybody I'm, knows you can't mix GHB with alcohol. You'll get sick. <laughs> You'll get raped. <laughs> Unless that's what you're going for. I'm going to go with Tiffany's favorite, which is warm grape Kool-Aid unsweetened with warm vodka. <laughs> I feel like this is just a thinly veiled how to rape a child written by Joseph Smith. It's they a cookbook. Seem for you. <laughs> It seems like the recipe, like the recipe reads like it's uh, trying to give your child an education as well. So <laughs> I, I believe that it, like, it's like, listen, you're 11 years old now. You need to know what happens when the corn gets pierced. It ejects milk. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I didn't even take that. It's like, yeah. what that would be. That's gross. You can't be a child forever. <laughs> It's time for you to start having children of your own. <laughs> like no Peter Pan land over here. <laughs> well, fuck me. I also want to say, I just noticed there's a note on the back of the package here. Um, it says, these all appear inedible. In the spirit of Mormon pioneers, serve with Mormon tea or homebrew beer? Question mark. I think beer was served at the Nauvoo temple dedication or it was acid. <laughs> Everyone was seeing spirits and babies spoke full sentences. <laughs> that, I, then I would want to be a part of that. Thank you, Super Fresh Candy Pants. We're going to get a lot of fun times out of this. Uh, and we're, you know what? I even think that it might be fun for us to make these like recipes and then film us eating them. 
and having <laughs> true reactions on whether they taste delicious or horrible. <laughs> Throw this piece of not ripe corn in a fire and see what good, happens. Good luck. <laughs> pray, pray the the gross away. <laughs> mm. That was fun. <laughs> All right. So uh, do we have, oh, we already talked about we're drinking, right? So mm-hmm. do we have anything to repent? I repent for making you watch Orange is the New Black. Oh, yeah. Season six and seven. It's awful. Have you watched any of that, Courtney? I, 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 yeah, I really like Orange is the New Black, but I agree with you. It kind of goes. It, it goes right. Down. The first couple seasons are really good. I but... love season one so much. Mm-hmm. But I would say I probably watched until season five. And like, so season, season four was all about it. Like when, um, uh, what's her name died? It was like, oh, well, fuck me. Right. And it was already kind of losing steam at that point. But then the whole riot season, I was like, oh, my God, I'm so bored. Is this never ending? And so I stopped watching. Well, I was like, you know what? It's over now. I want to see the last two seasons. It was a mistake. Listen, I came home from work several times and I was like, oh, you're watching this again? Like to try to not be a complete total bitch, but be like, what? There are so many. There's an endless amount of cool shit you could be watching and you only have so much time on this earth. Like, why would you be watching this? And what did you say to me? I need to know how it ends. <laughs> you need, you gotta have closure. I mean, I, I agree. It, it went downhill, but I wanted to find out how it ended. It's called fucking Google, people. Can't have an opinion on something if I didn't bother to watch it, which is why I watched Spice World. <laughs> I'm gonna let you know now. I, I don't, I'm not sure how many seasons there are, but I'm watching True Blood. Oh, I think no. I just started season four and uh, I just, just let, let me... it's not going to end well for you, Courtney. <laughs> I watched it twice. <laughs> but Alexander Skarsgård is so listen. Yeah. So anyway, that crush is that crush is waning. You know, you so. clearly we... haven't watched or listened to this podcast. And I, would, I just want you to know that we are feeling the feelings that you're feeling. We've all felt them. We've mm-hmm. all had our hearts broken and crushed by true blood. Some of us multiple times because somebody watch it more than one finish everything again i can't start something if i don't finish it (laughs) it's blood was so fucking good in fact hey a little maybe little known fact our closeout music for our um podcast we were watching true blood when we decided to make this podcast and i was like i want something that's like badass louisiana bayou sounding and so So vampire guitar vampire vampire guitar (laughs) the name of our outro music which I paid $5 for to the copyright. So just to be clear too, like, so I watched True Blood when it came out. I watched it every Sunday when a new episode was released and I loved it up until the point where, you know, uh, what's his face? Bill uh, proposes to uh, And uh, pretty much after that point, it goes straight downhill story-wise. But Alexander Sarsgaard, Sarsgaard, his sex appeal goes way up after that. So, I mean, that is a, uh, you know, weighing our options. It does help a little bit. Well, so when we were shut down for- You have uh, to be a patron. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you have to be a patron to see Mandy grind right there. And <laughs> yeah, that's for patrons only. Um, but so when we got shut down for quarantine, I was like, I'm going to watch True Blood over again. You know what? Maybe- I was just in a bad mood. Maybe it was better than I thought it was. No, I watched it again and it was straight shit. I've actually had to repent for watching it again to Mandy because I was wrong and she was right. And all of our from the first episode. It's fact. Okay. Well, that being said, ooh, our internet is unstable. <laughs> Uh-oh. Yeah, you, 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 you went out, out a little bit there. What about now? <laughs> I think we're doing okay now. Okay, good. Um, all right. Lucky so, patrons. Should we go to a commercial? I think we should probably hear a commercial. Let's our, hear uh, you guys, our sponsors. You guys are lucky that our executive genius creative director is here to oh. personally preview what you're about to hear. Take it away. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Having problems keeping family home evening exciting and fun? Well, never fear. Tree of Life Games is here to keep your family entertained with our new board game. Hint, similar to a game that's been around since 1948, but tailored to the good people like us, Hint is a game of murder, mystery, and deceit. The goal? 
figure out who killed Joseph Smith with what weapon in what room. Was it Brigham Young with a pair of garments in the library? Was it Mitt Romney with a Book of Mormon in the conservatory? Or was it Marie Osmond with a jello mold in the food storage cellar? Your family will have the time of their lives as they try to solve the mystery of Hint. That's Hint from Tree of Life Games. Family Home Evening with Bad Mormons listeners get 10% off your first purchase. Just use the promo code BRIMLY at checkout. It's the right thing to do and a tasty way to do it. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. You made it. Oh, wasn't that just a treat? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what you have come to known from us, it's known from us. Yeah, sure. Yeah. What you come to expect from this podcast week to week is us tire tirelessly Telling coming up with stories from our childhood that have scarred us, but we've grown from that make you laugh. Well, we didn't do that this week. I don't know if it's a story about shitting my pants. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't want to bring up old shit. Let me just say this. If Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, and Sean Hayes can talk about shitting their pants on their podcast. I mean, come on. We did it we, first. We did do it first. And they keep stealing our material. And that's fine. Whether it be Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> whether it be them shitting themselves. Actually, you're right. <laughs> they're constantly following in our amazing footsteps. Anyway, the point is, is that we're going to go a little off script for this podcast not just because we didn't prepare anything and we've been drinking all day on Sin Sunday. I'm sorry, we've been drinking all week. <laughs> <laughs> but we had a brilliant collective idea. We had an epiphany, if you will. Yes. Which apparently is where Tiffany's name comes from. And uh, we were talking to our sister Tiffany when we came up with it. Right. Correct. So we were like, Courtney, how would you like to come onto the podcast this week and have us pitch to you this idea? And she was like, you guys are stupid. Uh, sure, I'd love to do that. <laughs> Let's drink together. <laughs> so I'm going to set the stage. It's 2006. I'm working at the Beaver. I check IDs to make sure everything's legal. And you're legit. You're able to come in. You're over 21 and your ID is not expired. Well, that's a really fucking boring job. So I am able to read books while I do that. So I read all the good books. You know, I go through all the David Sedaris books. I go through like, you know, all the Kurt Vonnegut books. War and Peace. <laughs> yeah. I go through War and Peace. Actually, there was a book called um, History of Make-Believe, which I could only read in 20 pages at a time because it was so fucking depressing, but also very relevant to everything. And if you can stomach it, you should read it. It's great. Um, I read <laughs> One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish about five times I'd run out of things to read. So for Christmas, I asked all my friends to give me some books for Christmas. I think that would be great. Well, the next thing I know, I get about 50 books from our creative genius, creative director, Courtney, and uh, they're all Harlequin novels. They all come from the Goodwill. And they're about 99 cents. I'm pretty sure you got them half off. <laughs> I am a bargain chopper. <laughs> <laughs> and I shit you not, I read every single one of them. <laughs> it was embarrassing. I ended up making my own um, book covers for them with, you know, the brown paper bags. And I believe I wrote on them, fuck off. Don't ask me what I'm reading. <laughs> because, like, what were the titles that you had to hide? Things like The Hired Husband or <laughs> An afternoon in Peru. Actually, I made that one up, but you know, shit like that. It's not good. Um, and to be fair, after you've read about five of them, they have the exact same storyline every time. The characters are different, but the plot is the same. It's some sort of young, innocent love, some sort of miscommunication. Years go by, and then he, he because he's always the rich, powerful one, needs revenge but revenge love somehow. So like they have to get married or she has to move in with them. And then she, they fall in love again, but you know, hesitantly. And then there's, a, love. there's another sort of, you know, uh, miscommunication. And then there's the real love. Or had she gotten pregnant with this kid in the beginning? He didn't know it was his kid, but later he finds out it is. 
and then all is well in the world or she's a virgin and, you know little things like that seven parts. does that make sense seven parts so many parts yeah. And in one, it's an electrician. In another novel, he's a pirate. In another novel, uh, he's a fireman. We uh, like to compare it to um, the movie um, Shit with uh, Kurt Douglas and not Kurt. Joel and Niall? No. Romance, Romance in the Stone. Stone. Yeah. Only less adventure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kathleen Turner and Michael Douglas. There we go. There we go. Um, but anyways, I, I've read a lot of these books. I think they're fucking funny. We actually got to the point where we would read it to each other, like on the lawn while eating popsicles, but would do them in voices, which was always funny. Yeah, it was a fun summer thing. Like you see the girls on Instagram with their picnic blanket out on the grass, yes. eating a popsicle, <laughs> their sunglasses looking cute, like laughing. That was us. We did that same thing. Only instead of popsicles, it was vodka. And instead of a cell phone, it was a Harlequin novel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we read it in voices too. Right. Mandy was really good. She could do um, the smoker like Marge's sisters on The Simpsons for the woman. Oh my God. Kristen, your fingers are so long and they're tantalizing my delicate pearl. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Well, and Thank the you. dude was always a Steve Irwin Australian accent, which was like, Crocky! <laughs> Your voice, your voice vagina is so wet down there, <laughs> which I'm so sorry. That was horrible. And I apologize to all of our Australian <laughs> listeners. I apologize to no end. <laughs> you That's all the Australians think about is voice pussies. <laughs> I, just, I just want to point, point out too, like we, we kind of obsess over our stats a little bit on our podcast. Like the United States is our number one listenership. France is number two. Australia's number three, about to go to number 17 after what I happened. I apologize. Or it's going to way up because they're like, that that little cunt doesn't know what she's talking about. <laughs> they say it in a good way. <laughs> so I'm just going to jump in here real quick. What we decided would be a great idea. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me, let me just back up a quick second. The legal team... At FHE Bad Mormons Corporate has told us that we need to put out a little disclaimer for the podcast. So let's just let's just say this podcast is for entertainment purposes only. It's just for fun. Any similarities to people who are living or dead or about to be dead or by have my, the same name by my hand that maybe <laughs> sound like someone we're related to or maybe birthed us from their womb or maybe you could find court documents that say the same thing that's purely coincidental this is just for fun it's all made up we're it's just all telling, fictional we're telling stories we're just going off the cuff and shouldn't be listened to by anyone okay did we clear that up thanks south park okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, that being said <laughs> We decided we have a lot of stories for you guys, like a lot of stories that involve, you know, our, a fictional character named Jolene Mother Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and her subsequent lovers. And Jolene, <laughs> that we've been wanting to tell you guys these stories for so long, but we haven't had a way to do it in which somebody wouldn't get their feelings hurt. So I think we finally found the way. And we don't really have a story per se for you this week, but what we, we can bring it to you by our sweet novels, Charlotten novels. Yeah. Or Mama Quinn novels. We haven't decided quite yet, but we you let us know what you think. Is here's better. the thing for this podcast. We don't know exactly what we're doing, but we want to hash it out live with you and for you and try to decide what's the best way to write a Harlequin novel, which we're calling Charlequin novels 100% because we don't have the rights to the H1. Oh, yeah. The legal team has told us Charlequin, Charlequin novels. novels are acceptable. Um, so, Courtney, are you in for this? Courtney also had a really great idea of maybe a choose your own adventure romance novel, <laughs> which I frankly am in love with that idea. <laughs> so between the three of us now, do you think we could come up with basically an instructional video format on how to write a romance novel for the entire world to listen to. Easy, Absolutely. right? Piece of cake? 
I Googled it. It can't be that hard. I mean, if one person can do it, the three of us together right. can get like, you know, a chapter done. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to, I'm just going to give you guys a little, it was, we were brainstorming a little earlier. Um, we thought of, we were trying to think of the overview of the arc of the series, because we're not just limiting ourselves to one book, right? We're doing a whole series. So we've come up with six, possibly seven uh, books in the series, and we're not quite sure where really? to start and where to end, but here's the stories we're talking about. Number one is the polygamists. That's where we start, right? Um, we've come up with a few names, so I'm going to bounce these off you. Uh, we've come up with John Wayne Smith, maybe Joseph Epstein, Brigham Polanski, and Roman Young. <laughs> No, but the old one's my, the last one's oh, my favorite. Old Ephraim Gacy, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? What do you guys think of that? Can we do better? Is there something else we could add to that? For the, oh. we, we still have to also come up with the sister wives' names. Well, why did we cross out jo Joseph Espe um, Epstein? That's not for the listeners to hear. That's oh. just my own personal notes. I meant that's because what we decided was Alan's name was going to be. Oh, oh, shit. By Alan, I meant someone that was not real. Legal disclaimer. Fictional. <clears throat> yeah, because these, these, these are all fictional, right? Oh, they're totally all fictional. Fake. Totally these, fake. These are made up people in my own mind. Entertainment kind <laughs> people. So, you know how the Star Wars, um, when they were released as movies, they did not come out in the order that mm -hmm. they were originally written? Go on. I, I think that having the polygamists uh, be the first one that we write could, could be, could, could be, could be cool. tough. I think that maybe we should bounce around like those Star Wars novels <laughs> because we were going to need a lot of smut. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hold, hold, hold on let, let me tell you this too so we have we also have because we were i'm picking up what you're putting down we were kind of thinking maybe prequel eventually but so it's like where do we start in the life of our protagonist jolene mama quinn <laughs> do we start with uh <laughs> her first high school lover before she you know landed the the Check. the guy that ended up impregnating her with thousands of children you can't say the name yet <laughs> yeah but i want to so badly <laughs> do we or do we start with you know like where do we start in the timeline and right do, do we do prequels do, or post -quals? do we start in laguna niguel do we start in mission viejo here let me just let me just start here let, let me just run you through what we've got so far so we've got one one series would be the polygamists we've got one which would be a character we're calling chet fartwind <laughs> But it's French, so you would read it Farwin. <laughs> Farwin. It might rhyme with like, I don't know, Geth Judwin. I don't know. It's just, it's kind of up in the air. But that's kind of what we're thinking of. Um, we also have a character named uh, Jose, possibly like Jose Ladrone, Jose Bandido, <laughs> Jose <laughs> Malombre. It's, it kind of rhymes with like Ho Hernandez again. Just playing, you know, playing off the cuff here. Uh, our, our, our next character. <laughs> you can't just write his actual name. We're going we're gonna to call him. Alec. Uh, we're going to call him Balan Atif. Perhaps Alex Jones is an option. I like Alex Jones myself, but I feel like you can't have it just be Alex Jones. No, it's going to no, have to be. No, I think it should be something a little more. Like Alex Jones. No, it should be iconic, like Jack Twist, right? Maybe Jody Dallas. Maybe Gay Leather Daddy Bar Man. I don't know. We're just, we're just putting, you know, we're just spinning off the cup. It's just like, we, we're not married to that. Uh, then we also have, okay, here's where we get crazy. Oh, we might do a spinoff series with Dyson. Tyler? With a character no. called Dyson. Tyson. Just, no, Dyson. It's no, just, sorry. Dyson, what's the last name? We can't work it up to that. No. <laughs> I'm just so proud of it. We are, <laughs> we're thinking about a spinoff with a character named Dyson. We haven't quite thought of his last name yet, but we're thinking something about like, he, I feel like he's mighty. 
and strong. Yeah, maybe strong. Like maybe he's like the one mighty, right? And possibly strong. Yeah. We're thinking maybe like Dyson Thomas. That's what. <laughs> Whatever happens, like with this character, she's literally gonna blow him away somehow. <laughs> she's gonna blow him away, <laughs> literally. Um, that gets real creepy and it's going to break some taboo barriers, but we're willing to go there. This is all fictional. Well, that one will Absolutely definitely be fictional. And yeah, that's pretty much the rough outline. So instead of us, you know, thinking of funny stories of our past, we decided to give you really funny stories from our past that we're not allowed to tell. And it will be in book form for you to purchase or we'll give it to you we don't <laughs> no, really we'll know just give it to you we'll first. probably just give it to you and we were thinking that we would host it on the website gentlemen's genital genitals gented shit i'm drunk <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen's genitals well you're branching way out into the future well right well you know that website hasn't been created yet but i'm thinking it's going to be great <laughs> I, I i approve of this idea i think it's a going to be a great um uh is it a fan supplement to the uh to, to the pod um mm -hmm. uh I, I i look forward to contributing uh different words for wiener um, yes that's kind of and, what uh, too like i'm i'm thinking there's only so many ways you can say throbbing manhood or delicate pearl right that's your clitoris <laughs> I'm wondering how do they say it in Australia? Like what is a purple headed yogurt slinger in Australia or fucking South Africa? Like, what do you call a moist dick cave? No, that's not actually it. That's what, do you, different. what do you call your fortress of solitude in Swahili? Hey, that's mine. Fortress of solitude's mine. <laughs> or you call your swamp ass. That's mine. <laughs> So what we need is a lot, what we, basically what we need is we need a lot of adjectives. Yes. Longingly, huskily, throbbingly. Endearingly. I don't know. Dirtily. Is that a word? It is now. <laughs> Shit, Add yeah, it is. Fucking list. Uh, what we also need is. Filthily. We need names. We need names for our sister wives. We could use some good ones. And also we need, this is what we can come up with right now. We could need, we need names of like gay iconic characters to name after our fake mom's husband i mean our fake <laughs> protagonist's husband wow listen are we talking the are we talking the current um husband of our protagonist yes. or the past husband no the current husband the one that's super gay or that could potentially be a gayish genre that makes your it protagonist it's bad but you know the beard yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we came up with I, I really like jack twist i think that's like iconic but it also gives a little more credibility than i'm willing to lend <laughs> to the character <laughs> i don't know jody dallas was one that came up which i was like that's funny because it's like from the 70s and uh did you ever watch soap billy crystal's character Oh, that's great. But I feel like you can't just straight, straight up give somebody a name of a different character. That's true. Well, it would have to be, you'd mix up like first names oh, yeah. and last 100%. names. But I feel like Jody's a great first name. We like Jody. Fill in the blank. Yeah. Anyway, we have, a lot, we have a lot of work to do and we're not going to bore you guys with it, but we're going to entertain you with it next week. You're welcome. Because I have a feeling we're onto some fucking hot shit right now not hot shit like steaming hot shit coming out of your asshole no. hey hey no no no, no teasers no <laughs> teasers for the audience okay. <laughs> we're gonna call them tantalizers from now on no oh, okay. tantalizers. <laughs> um i also i just want to throw this out there i have met fabio and i might be able to get him to do our book covers no promises but you know i know some people i where did well, you meet where did you meet Fabio at? Uh, you meet oh, I was Tell about me. I was about to do a major legal faux pas. Um, I met him at a corporation I work for, which is owned by a man whose name may or may Just, not uh, rhyme don't do with it. Don't Beth do it. Jesus. <laughs> Bad Mormons Corporate does not like me saying the name of the company I work for. In fact, I'd probably get fired if I did. So 
we just like to she likes to ride the line let's <laughs> ride that line <laughs> uh was he awesome maybe that's the story we could tell for the week yeah he was awesome <laughs> he wasn't lame at all he did he did a lot of like sexy pose like so he knows cover, he plays cover the poses with Good all the him. people yeah no it was great it was great no because sometimes you meet famous people who are like all just like god damn it do i really have to do this again you yeah. know so the fact he's like do you want to take a picture let me be really super like let me unbutton my chest right i think sure. that's that's chest cool area. as fuck no like he was that. super cool super fucking cool in fact one of our patrons a dear friend of mine has a picture of herself <laughs> embraced in the arms of Fabio at the Kahala Mall grocery store of somewhere or the other. Fantastic. Some corporation I don't know of. All right. So if you're enjoying our podcast, why don't you head on over to YouTube, hit subscribe, or if you're already on YouTube, just hit the subscribe button <laughs> and thumbs it up. Actually, what I really want is I want you guys from other countries besides the U.S. to send us an email at fhebadmormons at gmail.com and tell us, what do you call your Not sexy flattery. parts? <laughs> what do you call your sexy time? What do you call your lady parts? Pound in the squish mitten. We need you to send us some sort of communication. We've got the Instagram. We've got the tweets. We've got the Facebooks, the TikToks. The, I'm super old. I'm really sorry, but we want to. We want you to tell us what do you call your private sexual areas? Moist in areas. Purple headed yogurt slinger. We we need to know what the pounding the, the, the dirty cave pillows. To Africa. The uh, the moist cupcake, if you will. <laughs> what's the? I feel like what's that movie <laughs> with James Vanderbeek where he lists them all off. That's what I wanted. We should have watched. That's that what I wanted to this. happen right now, and it just didn't happen. I'm like red tide, period vagina. There, I don't know if there's a grass play field. <laughs> field. God damn it! If there's grass on the field, play ball. Clearly, it's damn time. It. It's time to stop the go. podcast. It's we got to stop. And we've embarrassed I'll ourselves enough. Week. But if you have any euphemisms that we could add to our Charlequin novels, please send them our way. We're gonna need a lot of help. We've got the meat of the story. We just need the adjectives, okay? What do you call it in France? What do you call it in London? What do you call it in South Africa? That's what we want to know, okay? So send them our way. And while you're doing it, please be drunk. Because <laughs> we don't accept sober submissions. I mean, there's right no out way to actually check to see if that's a But bad. we'll know. We'll, we'll know. I'll feel it in my bones. Okay? Tell them that email address again. It's F H E badmormons at gmail.com f-h-e b-a-d b-a-g-i-n-a v vagina bye <laughs> <laughs> hey but we forgot about front butt <laughs> that's not how you just end stop it. It.